Is it true that we have to bail out Silicon Valley Bank? Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB for short, collapsed last week, making it the second worst bank collapse in US history. Since the collapse, the government, the financial press, massive financiers, and billionaires have said that if we don't bail out SVB, financial apocalypse is all but inevitable. But is this true? Silicon Valley Bank was a bank that catered to high-income, high-risk industries like tech, but also private equity and venture capital. But what's crazy here isn't that the bank collapsed, it's that the government has already announced that all of SVB's rich customers, the ones who put their money in the wrong bank and made all the wrong choices, are getting bailed out in full. Now, there are a lot of things that make this mind-boggling. First is that the government is bailing out the most speculative, risk-riddled, non-productive industry you could possibly bail out, which is venture capital. For those of you that don't know, all venture capital is, is when a bunch of rich people get all their money together and invest it in super risky investments to make more money. In fact, the very essence of venture capital is taking risks. And the whole thing about taking a risk is that you accept the consequences if things don't go your way. And that's exactly what would be expected of you or me when we take a risk. If we take out a loan so our kids can go to college and then they can't find jobs after school, we get told, Oh, well, that's the risk you take for getting a higher education. Maybe you should have thought twice before taking out a student loan. But apparently, if you're rich and incredibly reckless with your money, you become what's known as too big to fail, which means you don't have to bear the consequences of your mistakes, the entire country does. Not to mention, what actually makes a venture capital firm or a private equity firm so important that they're too big to fail? Because it's not like these companies actually create anything. They don't build bridges or make food or pave roads. All they do is buy things and find some sucker who's gonna buy it for a higher price. They contribute absolutely nothing to society. Yet we're being told that we have an obligation to bail them out for their greed and their mismanagement. Nothing makes this double standard more clear than the fact that the government is actually breaking its own rules to ensure that SVB's ultra-rich clients get back every penny they deposited. The money to bail out SVB's clients is coming from the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, which is supposed to insure bank deposits up to $250,000 in the event a bank fails. But since SVB catered to these wealthy clients, the vast majority of the bank's $157 billion in deposits was held in just 37,000 accounts, which all exceeded that $250,000 cap. As soon as the ultra-rich venture capital firms were at risk of losing their money, the Treasury announced that they would scrap the $250,000 cap and ensure all the SVB depositors get paid back in full. The government and the media have tried to reassure people by saying it's the banks that are going to foot the bill for the bailout, not the taxpayers. But this is a lie. While it's true that the bailout will be paid using fees taken from banks, we cannot forget that the bank's money is our money. The banks make money by taking the money we give them and loaning it back to us so we can buy cars and houses. They take the money we give them and use it to gamble on the stock market. This whole idea that we have to bail out the banks to avoid a massive crisis is a lie because it's based on the assumption that massive for-profit banks have to continue to exist in our society, that they play some kind of positive role in our lives. The reality is that banks don't improve our quality of life. People with jobs do. The truth is, banks don't create anything and the government could just let them fail and use the billions of dollars that they were gonna to use to bail out the rich to bail out the people and relieve them of mortgage debt and credit card debt, which is what makes banks like Silicon Valley Bank so rich in the first place. In fact, you could argue that freeing people from mortgage debt or having a highly educated workforce would be much better for the economy than having another for-profit bank whose only ostensible purpose for existing is to collect monthly payments out of our paychecks that we break our backs to bring home. So no, the government is not bailing out SVB because they're looking out for the little guy. They're doing it because the rich are holding the economy hostage and scaring everyone into thinking that if they don't get a bailout, there's gonna be some kind of financial doomsday. We only need to look back at the aftermath of the 2008 financial crisis, when the big banks got bailed out to the tune of $29 trillion, and they still came out of that crisis richer than ever before. You have a summer vacation home in Sun Valley, Idaho, Yet you and your wife have an art collection filled with million dollar paintings. Your former president, Joe Gregory, used to travel to work in his own private helicopter. They want us to think that this bailout issue is so complex and that we have no idea what we're in for if we don't get behind the bailout. But it's actually really simple. The rich lost their money and they want us to pay for it. The question is, are we gonna let that happen?